Good afternoon, I'm Liz Reyes. We start with some breaking news. Local businessman Sidney Torres says he is not going to run for New Orleans mayor. He made the announcement on his Facebook page, stating in part, like many of our citizens, though, I am frustrated by a lack of leadership, selfish political posturing, and an unwillingness to find collaborative solutions to age-old problems. Therefore, even though I will not be a candidate for our city's top job, I will do everything possible to ensure that the next mayor wants a responsibility, not just a title. Torres says he will form a largely self-funded political action movement called the Voice of the People. He joins us right now, live on the phone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So tell me about this decision. A hard decision? It was one of the toughest decisions I've ever made in my life. I got to say that, you know, I was pressing the button on my social media platforms. And um, I also, at the same time, was thinking about not pushing the button. So, you know, it was the, one of the hardest decisions I've ever made. I'm, I'm really torn up about it. It's kind of, uh, you know, it's a, it's a tough, it was a tough, tough, tough uh, few days for me. And um, I feel like I kind of went through a, a fight. <laughs> What, what would you say the, were the key things that made you decide in the end, this is not for me right now, at least not in this capacity, will I be doing something to help the city? I mean, as from, from, a, from the PAC side? From the side of you personally deciding not to run, was there one specific thing, two specific things that made you decide in the end? When you had that list, the do's, the pros, the cons, what was it that made you decide, I, I think I'm going to stay out of this one? Well, you know, I mean, I operate a lot off of my senses, and I, I always say my mind, my heart, and my gut is, is, you know, needs to be in line. And I believe that God speaks to us through those senses. And I think that, you know, for me, it's like I operate like that when I'm doing business deals. And, and so, you know, the things that go through my mind are that, you know, I know I could do the job. I know I could do it because I've, that's what I do. I'm a turnaround guy. I I turn troubled assets around and implementer. I'm an implementer and an executor. And, and so from the mind standpoint, I knew I can do it. Um, from the heart, I knew, you know, my heart loves the city, loves the people of the city. And I, and my heart knows that they want the best for the city and I want to, and I know I could do it. So that's, my heart was there. My mind was there. It was just the gut. The gut just could not get there. And, and so, you know, the commercial being leaked earlier on, that, that, those kind of things and, and other stuff that go on through politics. I mean, I know it's a, a full contact sport in, in New Orleans. They call it a blood sport. But, but, you know, for me, it's like at this time, I don't know if it's, it, you know, I kept going back and forth. Is it better for me uh, being the mayor or is it better for me having this committee and putting money behind it and, and polling the issues each month and holding them accountable like I did with Mitch Landrieu, uh, the mayor now, with the, with the crime in the French Quarter and, and other areas throughout the city. Is it, is it more important for me to, to stand out and, and call that? And then in four years from now, if, it, if it's not and, they, and it's not where it needs to be, you know, I know what it feels like to be in this position and, uh, and maybe it'll be my time then. So tell me about this advisory board and how you hope it will help you decide which of the candidates running for mayor you will back. So the advisory board is something that normally when, when we had the issues with crime and, and we, or any other issue, I would pay for it out of my pocket and you know, make commercials and, and put them on the air and bring up the issues. And so I was trying to find a way to compromise with my gut to figure out how could I still be involved and be heard and, and, and still have, have, uh, have the voice of the people. And, and so we came up with the name, the voice of the people, we created a Facebook page and I opened up an account. And, uh, and so w what we're looking to do is I'm looking to right now, get someone who's going to be the spokesperson and who's actually going to run it. Um, I'm actually looking, I'm going to have a, a, a board of, of people from uptown, people from the ninth ward, people from Gentilly, people from the French quarter. And when I say people, I mean a person, that represents the people within those areas, and um, we're going to poll the issues uh, each each month, and we're going to we're going to bring them up, and we're going to ask the candidates about their platform. But you know, I always believe in that when you you can go and hire the best and biggest consultants to give you these elaborate plans, but right now the city needs an executor and an implementer, somebody that knows 
how to get that done. And so when, when we look at these platforms, what we're going to do as a committee of the Voice of the People, we're going we're gonna to ask the tough questions and say, how can you do this? This plan calls for X, Y, and Z. We're going to go through it with experts, and we're going to question them on those, on those things that they want to do within those plans. And we're going we're gonna to follow that through all the way. And when they're elected, whoever's elected for mayor, we're going we're gonna to hold those people accountable to show that if they're working or if they're not working. Like Mitch Landrew came up with NOLA Patrol. It was a complete failure. It didn't work. And a bunch of money was spent on that. Well, those are kind of things that we're going to put out on the forefront. We're going to put them out there, and we're going we're gonna to show that you can't just go spend tax, taxpayers' money and not be held accountable. So these are the things we're going to do, but we're also going to talk about the good things, too. It's not going to be an attack committee. We're going to do what's right and what's good for the people, and we want to make sure that that it, 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 it has a voice for everyone. That's why we called it the voice of the people. So it's kind of a way that I, I was able to negotiate with my, with my gut to, to feel like I could still have a part, give the people of New Orleans a voice, and um, be a part of the process. My last question to you, do you think there's still one candidate out there, even though we're down to the, the last hours now, that has yet to show up that you believe mm -hmm. could be the person it, that we're waiting for or some people say they're waiting for? Well, let me just say this. Um, all I know is that this is a, 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 the biggest position in the city uh, as far as, as being the mayor of the city of New Orleans is, 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 is one of the most important p political positions uh, in this city and even, even throughout the state of Louisiana because it's a, it's a powerful position. Uh, it holds a lot of power when it comes to controlling a lot of the uh, things with, that go on throughout the city and, um, and, and the state. When people say Louisiana, they always think of New Orleans because everybody knows New Orleans. So, you know, this position is a powerful position. And I think that anybody who was thinking or looking at running at it um, and was serious about it would have been out there talking to people and would have been out there trying to figure out how to get in there and, and make things better. And, and, it, and the fact that you haven't, you know, really heard of anybody doing that, I think that if they do come in, uh, they're doing it maybe for some of the wrong reasons, maybe just for the title, because to me, it's a serious position and it's a position of, of something that is not just, oh, I'm going to decide at the last minute to come in and not go through the process that I went through that other people that have been looking at it have been going through. I mean, this is a this is not just a, a, a I'm going to make a decision to go in because I, I have name recognition and people may know me. Um, this is a position that you, you it takes weeks and months to really talk to individuals, uh, talk to some of the other candidates, and really figure out, is it right? Is the position right for you? And are you right for the position? And so my point to, my point to this is, is that when, when you look at this, it, it, anybody that comes in that might be a big name uh, that we haven't heard of, just jump in um, and not, not go through the processes that I was just talking about. I think that um, I think they're going to have a hard time winning. Sydney Torres, thank you so much for joining us here on Fox 8 News at noon. Uh, appreciate that. Once again, uh, if you're just joining us, uh, local businessman Sydney Torres announcing he is not running for mayor of New Orleans, but he will still play somewhat of an active role there with the advisory board advising him on who to back in the upcoming race. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, today's the last day to qualify for New Orleans mayoral election. Seven people have qualified so far. Five candidates from the Democrat Party, including Charles Anderson, Michael Bagneris, LaToya Cantrell, Desiree Charbonnet, and Joni Smith. Two other candidates have qualified with no party affiliation. They're Byron Cole and Matthew Hill. Also making big news today, a teenage boy faces charge.